Again, welcome to DSRT 734 class. This lecture cover the measures of central tendency. This is the part two of our lectures, measures of central tendency, which cover chapter three of our course textbook. In our previous lectures, we discussed on how to determine the mean, media, and mode. In this session, we're going to learn how to determine the weighted mean of a data set and also the mean of a frequency distribution. We're also going to describe the shape of a distribution as a symmetric or uniform or skewed and compare the mean and media for each. So we start with the weighted mean. Here we say the mean of a data set whose entries have a varied weights. And so the formula will be X bar, which is the sample mean and the sum of each data entry multiplied by the weight of that data entry. So first we're going to multiply each data entry with its weight, then we sum everything. Then divided by the sum of the weights. So again, the W is the weight of each entry of X. Now let's see an example. Here we are taking a class in which our grade is determined from five sources. First, we have 50% of your test mean. So that would be the weight for the test mean. And also 15% from the midterm and 20% from final exams and 10% from computer lab work and 5% from our homework. Now, the score for test is 86, which is the test mean. Also, the midterm is 96, the final exams is 82, computer lab is 98, and the homework is 100. Now, what is the weighted mean of your scores? If the mean average for A is 90, did you get an A? So first, we have to find the weighted mean. Now, when we look at this data, we can see that, for example, 50% of the mean test, so the weighted is 50%. And this 50%, the test mean is 86. Now the midterm is 96 and the weight is 15%. So the formula said we should multiply each entry by the weight, then we sum all of them. So this means again, the test mean is 86, the weight is 50%, which is 0.5. So we multiply 86 by 0.5 and we get 43. The midterm was 96. The weighted percent was 15, so it will be 0.15. So we multiply 96 times 0.15. Then the final exam is 82 times 0 0.20 because it's 20%. Computer lab is 98 times 0 0.10, which is 10%. Then the homework, the score was 100 and it's 5%, so 100 times 0 0.05. So when we multiply, we have the answer here, 43 plus 14.4 plus 16.4 plus 9.8 plus 5, and that gives us 88.6. So this will be the X or the each entry times the weight and sum of all of them. So the sum of each data entry and its weight and the product of the weight. So now to find the mean or the weighted mean, again, to be the product of each entry and its weight, sum together divided by the sum of the weight. The sum of the weight in this case would be 100%. So it's one. So this means our answer will be 88.6 divided by one. And now we say your weighted mean for the course is 88.6. So we did not get an A because the question say A is supposed to be 90%. So at least A is 90 and we get 88.6. So we didn't get an A. So now to find the weighted mean again, it will be the sum of each entry times the weight of that entry then we divide by the sum of all the weights. 
Now let's look at the next example, which is the mean of grouped data. And that will be the mean of a frequency distribution. So the formula will be the sum of each S entry times the frequency divided by the sample size. So the uh, example, what we're trying to say here, for example, I have a value 20 and 20 and 30. How do I find the mean? Since I have two 20s, the F will be two. So it will be two times 20 plus three divided by three because I have 20, 20, and three. So that's why we say the N will be the sum of the frequency. Again, where X and F at the midpoints and also the frequency of the class. <coughs> so that's the steps to find it. So first we need to find the midpoint of each class, which will be the lower limit plus the upper limit divided by two. Then we find the sum of the products of the midpoints and the frequency. So that will be again the sum of each X value times the frequency then we find the sum of the frequencies, which will be our sample size. So N equal to the sum of all the frequencies. Then to find the mean of the frequency distribution, it will be the sum of the X entry times the frequency divided by N. And again, N is the sum of all the frequencies. So let's see an example here. Here they say we should use the frequency distribution to approximate the mean number of minutes that a sample of internet subscribers spent online during their most recent sections. So within the classes from seven to 18 points, we have six. From 19 to 30, we have 10. 31 to 42, we have 13. 13 means the number of subscribers, the frequency. Now, between the within all the ranges, we find the midpoint. Remember the midpoint we say to be the the lower limit and the upper limit divided by two. So here means again to lower limit plus the upper limit divided by two. So here the lower limit is seven plus 18 divided by two should give us 12.5. Uh, same thing, 19 plus 30 divided by two will give us 24.5. So next we find the X times F for each entry. So we are using 12.5 times six, it's give me 75. The midpoint 24.5 times 10, and because we have frequency 10, 245. The midpoint 36.5 times 13, give us 475, or 474.5, all the way to the last one. So now we know the sum of X times F, which we had all the entries with their frequency product of their frequency. And also we know the total frequency, we had all the values, we get 50. So now we can find the mean, which will be 2089 divided by the 50. Again, the 50 is N, N again is the frequencies, the total frequency for each category. Now let's, let's talk about the shape of distributions. And we have the first, we have the symmetric distribution. Symmetric distribution means the mean, media, mode are the same. So the distribution at the center will be symmetric. When, when we are in the center, we consider the shape of the graph from the center to the left and also center to the right is the same. Actually, that's why we call it symmetric distribution. And any symmetric distribution, the mean and media and mode values are the same and they are in the center. Now with a uniform distribution, the mean and the media are the same. Here we consider the frequency is the same throughout. That's why it's called uniform distribution, it's a rectangular shape. So here we say all entries or classes in the distribution have equal or approximately equal frequencies. So they are also symmetric. For in the center, the shape to the left and right are the same. Now with the symmetric, we say the vertical line can be drawn through the middle of the graph of the distribution 
and the res resulting halves are approximately mirror images, so symmetric. Now, skew left distribution, which is negatively skewed. So with a negative skewed, normally the media is greater than the mean. So here we see the tail of a graph that locates more to the left. So the mean is to the left of the media, which means the mean is less than the media. So anytime we have a, a distribution and it's skewed to the left, also called a negative skew, it means the median value is greater than, again, the mean. Normally, to find the skew of a distribution, it will be the mean minus the media divided by the standard deviation. So if you have a negative skew, that means, again, the media is bigger than the mean because the formula is mean minus media. And the same thing applied to the skew to the right means we have a positive skew. So we can see that the mean is at the right. So the mean will be greater than the media. Because again, to find the skewness of a distribution is the mean minus media divided by standard deviation. So the skew will be positive if the mean is greater than the media. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures will learn how to find the weighted mean and also grouped mean. And also we discuss about four different shapes of a distribution, uh, symmetric, uniform distribution, skewed to the left, and also skewed to the right. These materials were covered in chapter three of our course textbook. Thank you.